Welcome back. So we are ready to get started with the second talk of the day. We have Satoshi Nawata. He will tell us about brains and Daha representations. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I have been enjoying this wonderful workshop. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'd am i like to give a, um, send a special thanks to the Ashwin for a wonderful organization. Um, I mean, here, ICTP organization is wonderful. I mean, it's uh, way above the Indian standard. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to talk about the uh, ongoing work with the, the these three uh, gentlemen. Um, talking on the relationship uh, between the representation of double affine algebra and the geometry in Hitchimoja space. Um, I'm glad to uh, have a chance uh, to speak here in India because when I started uh, this project, I have uh, taken a look at the, the collected paper of Harish Chandra. Um, it turns out that the Harish Chandra started a PhD in Bangalore um, in physics. I was surprised to know that. I mean, uh, um, he started a PhD in Bangalore IS, ISC, uh, which is a bit uh, uh, different place. I mean, it's a uh, more closer to the center, and he moved to the the Cambridge uh, Cambridge during the course of the PhD under the supervision uh, of Dirac, and he completed a PhD in physics and moved to IAS. Uh, and uh, when the the last part of uh, the, his physics PhD was devoted into the representation of the Lorentz group. The, after the, uh, the interaction with the mathematician at IS, he switched to the mathematics and they constructed to the nowadays called uh, the, uh, the Harshan module, which is the infinite dimensional representation of the non compact Lie group. And this study has been um, actually uh, the interpret in terms, uh, for, for instance, discrete series of Harshandra has been interpreted in terms of the uh, Borel Bay Bot theorem by the Narashman and who is also a great mathemat Indian mathematician at Okamoto. And this uh, geometric interpretation of this Harshan module is sublated, uh, sublated into the cardinalistic conjecture proven by the Balance and Bernstein and the Brinsky Kashwara. And nowadays it's called uh, the geometric representation theory. So today um, I'm going to talk about the geometric representation theory of double affine Hecke algebra. So this, this work is a deeply, uh, the, has a deep origin to the um, Indian mathematician Harish Chandra, Narashiman, Sishadri, and then Ramanan, and so on. And, uh, and uh, their students, Indra Neil, and also he's not around, <laughs> and uh, Nichur, and so on. So thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to speak here. Okay, so the content of my talk is the Z3, and you can read, and the goal is to show is a relationship between category of A brains, A brains of the modular space of, of the um, one functional torus of SL2C. And the certain simpl I have to specify when you say a brain is I have to specify the symplectic form. I, I call it omega x. I will explain what the form is and the relationship between representation category of Daha of a one. That's the so the I like to show the relationship in particular. So this is actually contains the Gaia category of the uh, this content. Uh, where the um, object in Fukaya category is the flat local system or flat unit bundle over Lagrangian. But in physics tells us that the, the we should, Fukaya category is not, uh, not enough to see the, the complete relationship between representation category. So we like to see the bigger category, which has not been defined yet. But um, from physics perspective, it's natural to think all the A brain category, which is bigger than uh, the uh, Fukai category mathematician has been thinking about. So that's I'm going to explain. So, so this is a bigger. This is a bigger. Um, so this is the goal of my talk. 
So, the, so let's start with the first part. So let's consider the Daha. What is Daha? Oh, um, so Daha is the acronym of Dava Upon Heke Algebra, uh, which may sound, to the in, uh, sound intimidating to physicists, but there is a clear topological interpretation. So we started with the one uh, O4 fundamental group uh, of the T2 point, so one functional torus mod Z2. So we have the universal covering of the T2 mod point, and these are the point. It's the universal cover. You, you have a bunch of lattice. And the point is a, the, the point exercise, uh, exercise removed from the T2. And Z2 acts on the, you just identify the opposite point around the point, okay? The puncture. And there's a, uh, so the OV4 fundamental group can be understood uh, from the inverse covering. So there's one generator called T because these points are identified. And there's a meridian, X, and the longitude. Why? So these are the generator of the OV4 fundamental group. So x plus minus, meridian, and longitude, and t plus minus. And there is a relation. Um, so, so relations, one is the t square x, y, x inverse, y inverse, which is trivial, okay, inside the inverse covering. So the t square x, y, x inverse, y inverse is trivial. Another relation is the um, so uh, maybe I should use a uh, blue color. So the T, when, once you take T, T is uh, is can be also understood as general Z two. So so the direction the arrow is reverse. So T X T X. Okay. So T X T X. This is also trivial. Um, and also another, uh, which one is involved the longitude. So T and the, so t once you take T, direction arrow is reverse. So T Y inverse T Y inverse. So T Y inverse T Y inverse, which is equal to one. So this is obvious for the obvious fundamental group of the the T two mod point um, over Z two. Okay. So this is uh, this. Group is called uh, elliptic right group or uh, double affine double affine right group. Okay, sometimes called double affine right group. And uh, double affine Heck algebra of rank one, which I call just H double dot. Okay, so double dot means a two copy of affinization. It's just the quant includes one deformation parameter, t square x, y, x inverse, y inverse, include deformation parameter q, and uh, this part is the same. And, uh, and you add a quadratic equation uh, for the generator t. So this t can be understood as the y group of uh, d2, uh, a1 type, whose deformation is understood as um, Heke algebra. Okay, so this is called. Q is the one parameter, T is another deformation parameter. Small, this is small t, this is small t. Oh, sorry, and the sign is wrong, sorry. This is plus and this is minus, sorry. So, sorry, so please, this is t pl plus t inverse and capital T and small t. Capital T is a generator of the... Uh, Daha and the small is a deformation parameter. Okay, don't get confused. Yeah, T square. Well, which is the wire group of A one? Yeah. So, so the elliptic uh, blade group does not uh, impose any relation to T. 
you, you have to add the quadruple relation to the elliptic braid group. So that's the, the, the hierarchy of wire group, Hecke algebra, and braid group. That's the you just, uh, or, I mean, even in, you, if you remove braid uh, double affine, if, even, that's a relation. That's a relation. Uh, so, this, so the two deformation parameter Q and the small t, these are the two deformation parameter. Two deformation parameter. And so often uh, we just, so I think what Jack mentioned is as follows. When t, q, uh, c, so what, what's the, Zero, zero. Zero. <laughs> zero. Algebra, it's algebra. Double fine algebra. <laughs> okay. No, but, but here, here is double alpha, this is daha. Definition of double alpha and algebra of rank one. Yeah, this is the elliptic group, or like braid group. The, the downstairs is a daha. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's that's true. Uh, this is, this one is kind of categorification. Yeah. From uh, uh, Hecke to Brady is kind of categorification. Okay. Um, and uh, so there are two deformation parameter which are uh, sorry t and q are the c star variable. And uh, often t and q are related by central to c. So that's what um, a generic call one. Okay, and the, since the it's constructed from PSL to uh, uh, sorry t two more point, so the one can easily assume that there's a PSL to the action on daha, so which is generated by one one zero one one zero one one. Uh, I call it generated is tau plus which maps, I mean, just on our story, x goes to x, y goes to um, q3 minus one half, um, x, y, and tau minus y goes to y, and x goes to q minus one half, uh, y, x. Okay. So the, this is on our story. Meridian is mapped to uh, longitude times uh, meridian, and so on. And it's, so these are the I mean, this is T transformation, and it's, uh, how to say, the reflection of T. I mean, uh, and uh, there is an important element, which is, uh, uh, which is called sigma, which is uh, incarnation S transformation, tau plus tau minus tau plus, tau minus tau plus uh, tau minus, which just swap meridian longitude, and the longitude to meridian shifted by x T square. So this is a PSA to the action on the double hack algebra, okay. since it can be constructed T to more point. Uh, I should mention that the, oh, sorry, before, I should mention that, so this relation is called the heck algebra, which is the deformation wire group. So when you take T equal to, as you mentioned, that t, when you take a small T is equal to 1, you get the T square equal to 1 which is the Z2, Z2 group. Uh, and this is whose deformation is Hecke algebra. And these are called affinization. Affinization. The affinization. And you have a two copy affinization. That's why it's called double affine Hecke algebra. Okay? And it, this X and Y is, are called the polynomial part, of which you will see what, why it's, they are called the polynomial part. So the polynomial part, Satisfy this relation. Okay, any question?
It's sigma. It's called sigma. It's sigma. It's everything I follow the generic notation. So they they they, they are called everything called generic. Uh, I mean generic called this. I mean coin this notation. So complain to generic if you <laughs> if you want to complain. Uh, so this is the essential S transformation. And this is, uh, I mean, people call R or L or whatever, R or L. Essentially, the, the flavor is just T transformation. Okay. And there's an important subalgebra called spherical. Uh, that's subalgebra. Spherical subalgebra. Um, so the, when Sergei Stoke and also Tony Stoke, there is a so-called spherical Heck algebra. That's uh, the, the subalgebra in the Hecke subalgebra, uh, Heck algebra, uh, which is defined by using item potent. So when you, sorry, I should write very carefully. Small t plus t inverse, and t inverse. So this is, uh, so when you use a Heck relation, e squared is equal to e. It's easy to check. So that's called idempotent. Idempotent. So the spherical subalgebra is defined, so the I call it SH double dot, is defined just sandwiched by Hecke, uh, but this idempotent, this idempotent, okay? And it's generated by the X, Y, and Z, uh, which is the one plus T square sandwich X sandwich by E, okay, um, which is the X plus X inverse E, okay, and also one plus some prefactor. So prefactor is not important, but uh, in order to see a uh, beautiful structure, it's better to put. Okay, and Z is uh, Q one half Y inverse X plus Q minus one half x inverse y. Okay. So the, these are generator of the uh, spherical daha. I call it uh, spherical daha, sh. And which satisfy the following conditions. So the x, y, and q combinator is equal to uh, q minus q inverse uh, z. And uh, everything is equal. Uh, I'm going to write everything. Let's write everything. Um, Q is equal to uh, y. Okay. Uh, so where the Q commutator is defined as follows: a Q one half a b minus Q minus one half b a. Okay. It's pretty standard. Okay. This little t, little t. It's prefactor. Okay. Okay, so then, so those are the standard Q combinators satisfy this condition. So in physics language, it's called scan relation, just scan. Um, and there is a center of the algebra, QX square plus Q inverse Y square plus Q um, Z square minus Q one half X by Z um, is equal to Q one half plus Q minus one half square plus T Q um, one half minus T inverse uh, Q minus one half square. Okay. Um, so the reason why it's called center is um, the right hand side only depends on the parameter, the formation parameter. So therefore, it commutes with all element. That's why it's a center of the algebra. Okay. <laughs> so these are the the algebra. Of the in 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 called spherical subalgebra inside a Heck algebra, I call spherical daha. Um, and it, so the important part is that the um, so when you take q equal to one limit, something interesting happened. So the when you take q equal to one limit, so this R is become commutative because um, Q vanishes, uh, Q equal to one, so Z com becomes commutative. X, Y, Z are commutative, but what what's left is uh, the the last equation. So when Q equal to one, 
uh, the S double H at Q goes to one becomes commutative, commutative ring, and whose generator satisfies the following condition. Um, so it's a four plus uh, t minus t inverse square. It turns so as if you're in the uh, the geometry person, one can easily see that this is is called the. I think there are many names uh, on it. It's a Kleinian surface or whatever, um, which is inside C three. And this is called uh, this is equivalent to mod space of flat connection of puncture torus point of SL to C. So where the X is the holonomy of meridian and Y is the uh, longitude and Z is the one comma one uh, in a torus, one comma one cycle. One 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 comma one means meridian longitude uh, wraps uh, one time, and it, what, what's the meaning of t? T is a so-called ramification of point here. So when you write this right-hand side, is can be written two plus trace b, where the b. Uh, sorry, I, I, call, I like to call it u. Sorry. U trace U, and the U is a matrix which is T square, T minus square, zero zero. Okay, a diagonal matrix. So this trace U is a, the monotony at the puncture point P. Okay. So the, there's a puncture T. So this the monotony is U, is U at U, and the, so this X is a meridian. And y, uh, y is the longitude, and z is the that z is the. I don't want to write. I'm not. I'm really bad at the drawing. Something like uh, like this way. Okay. So this is. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't use green. Uh, let's use a red. So let's see. Okay, so the, so therefore, so when you take the um, q equal to one limit, it would describe the, the modular space of flat connection uh, over the one puncture torus, where the, the deformation parameter small t appear as a de, uh, ramification at the point q. Okay. So the, this is the one, uh, one evidence why the data is related to the, this modular space of flat connection. Over the one function torus. Um, so, so therefore, so this this spherical data can be understood. Uh, maybe before going that, I think I should mention that the. So this in physics language, this is is related to Wilson loop. And this is related to hoof loop. At hoof loop. And this is dionic operator. Operator, uh, line op loop operator. In 4D and equal to two star theory. So the reason why I think uh, physicists can easily imagine that why the uh, 4D and equal to two star theory arise. If you in a, you know the class S theory, if you wrap the M5 round on the one puncture torus, what you get is 4D equal and 2 star theory. Um, and it's a Coulomb branch. So the, if you put the 4D n equal 2 star theory on S, sorry, S1 cross R3, and the modulus, the Coulomb branch, branch is given by modular space of flat connections. Of one puncture torus, SL to C, and whose the coordinate, uh, double coordinate 
of function new send type is given by this loop operator wrapping on S1. Okay. So that's the work of uh, Gayat Muanaitsky. And in Japanese, uh, so this is Gayat Muanaitsky and uh, Ito uh, Okuda, Japanese group, Taki. Okay. So the and Sperka Daha. So these are so the loop operator wrapping on this S1 will give you the coordinate of the the modulus space of flat connections, and the Sperka Daha can be understood as the quantization. In particular, it's called deformation quantization of the coordinate ring. Um, deformation quantization coordinate ring of lat um, SL, I mean, everything the same. T2 more point, SL2C. And uh, I have to be careful about actually complex structure. I would like to say it's a holomorphic, holomorphic coordinate, okay? X and the holomorphic coordinate, and it's. I will explain it more in detail. It's a hyperkähler manifold, and it's some complex structure, in particular complex structure coming from eta to c. So therefore, you have to be careful. So the coordinate ring, but you have to specify uh, it's holomorphic in complex structure coming from the group. Okay. Yes. Oh, I will explain. That's what I'm going to explain. And in physics language, so the uh, the introducing this Q is just adding an omega background. And so, um, if you add omega background, so let's call R R prime. I think that's what I think Tudor and the company usually write. So this R two is this R two, and there's the R direction is here. And you just rotate, so the, there's the omega background Q here. And at point, uh, each point you have a loop operator. So this, whatever, Wilson to Foofed, Wilson to Foofed, um, and ionic operator at the, at the, so if you add the, um, the omega background loop operator localized to this, the center, so therefore, it becomes non-commutative. Okay. Uh, that's why in the, the ring is becomes non-commutative once you turn on the omega background. Okay. I'm sorry? Ramification. Oh, in the, in the language of the language is the gaze here, you mean? Oh, sorry. Um, I mean, it's roughly speaking mass parameter, but it's more complicated. <laughs> I will explain it more in detail in uh, in later, um, in the in the in the following uh, in well, in the geometry of future module space. N to be honest, no. Strictly speaking, no. I will explain. <laughs> Strictly speaking, no. Um, but roughly speaking, mass parameter, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, fundamental advantage, everything fundamental advantage. Yeah. Um, okay, any other questions? Okay, so the, so this is the the Daha and the physics interpretation. I like to explain about the finite dimensional representation. What time? So 40 meters, wow. So the, to, and to study the finite dimensional representation, you have to uh, study polynomial, uh, polynomial representation, which is the, uh, I call it PL, which is the, S double dot H goes to end of um, end of CQT x x inverse z two. So this is a ring of similar functions. Uh, CQT is the uh, field of 
function or field of rational function with variable q and t, z2 acts on the standard way, x, x inverse. So that's called ring of symmetry functions. Um, and x is mapped to uh, x plus x inverse. x, small x, is just a generator of a spherical dacha. Y is mapped to the, the following tx minus t inverse x inverse, x minus x inverse. Uh, I call it curly pi. Plus, can you see this part? Not, 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 not below, okay. Um, t inverse x minus t x inverse, x minus x inverse, uh, curly pi, where the pi uh, of x is a difference operator. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to write the z. Z come from, uh, the, coming from this uh, commutation relation. And this y, this difference operator is called uh, McDonald. Uh, McDonald difference operator. Um, and the basis, uh, the basis of ring of symmetry functions, uh, x, x, sorry, x, x inverse, z2, is actually the same as CQT, CQT, generated by x plus x inverse, is, uh, is given by McDonald polynomial, is uh, given by The McDonald polynomial PL X Q T. Uh, so where L is stands for, as you know, McDonald polynomial is labeled by Young Tableau, but it's rank one, so it's labeled by number of boxes in single row. Okay. Um, then so this polynomial representation, McDonald operator, uh, acts on the McDonald polynomial, which is the eigenvalue. And uh, eigen, uh, sorry, eigenvector and uh, eigenvalue is given by PL. Okay. So this is the action of the McDonald difference operator on the on the McDonald polynomial. And to understand um, representation, you uh, you define the um, You will define the um, lowering, uh, raising, um, raising and lowering operator. Operator. So I call raising operator L is equal to x plus q to the minus L t to the minus one z. L is equal to x plus Q to the L, T, C. Okay. Uh, so I, if once you define this Z operator, the action of this uh, operator under the polynomial representation is given by as follows: uh, two L minus two L. Sorry, minus two L T to the minus two uh, P L plus one. So it increases the number of boxes by one. Okay. So L is the number of boxes. So when R acts on P, it increases the number of boxes. Um, P L acts on decrease the number of boxes, L minus one, and one minus Q to the two L. One minus Q to the two L minus one T to the four. Okay, over. 1 minus q3, 2, l minus 1, t square. So this, so therefore, so we want to define this lazy boring operator. Um, so one can study the representation theory. So you started with p0, p0 which is equal to actual 1, and the p1, which is equal to x plus x inverse and so on. 
So this is McDonald, just McDonald polynomial. You just act on raising operator, and you see the ladder of the uh, McDonald operator, uh, McDonald, sorry, polynomials, and so on. Um, let's see. And lowering operator decrease the number of boxes. Okay. So that's a representation, and so on. That's called polynomial representation. That's why x and y are called polynomial part of the double factor algebra. That's the meaning of polynomial part. Okay. And the finite dimensional representation appear when this lowering operator kill lowering operator kill the McDonald polynomial. So therefore, then you can just quotient uh, the idea generated by infinite uh, infinite dimensional idea generated by the one killed by a lowering operator, and what you get is the finite dimensional representation. Okay, that's what's going to happen. So therefore, so you need to look at the the when this lowering operator becomes uh, vanishes. So therefore, more precisely, so you, you have to look at the when the, this numerator vanishes okay, to see the finite dimensional representation. So that that will give you a shortening condition. Condition. So one is when this factor vanishes, which is the root of unity. When q to the n, uh, sorry, q to the q to the two n is equal to one. The second, when this part vanishes, okay, this factor vanishes, that will give you two condition. So when let's see, q t square is equal to q to the minus two k minus one, two k minus one, since when t square is equal to q3 minus even number of the power, so denominator also vanishes. So therefore, it's not convenient. So you have to look at the only odd exponent okay, to, to, see the, to, to vanish the lowering operator. And another condition is minus q to the n, minus n. Okay. So, the, so of course, capital N is integer. Uh, k is, I, I would say, the positive integer, um, positive integer, and the k is, and the n is the positive integer. Okay. That's a condition. So, two and three will give, give you vanishing condition, shortening condition, when this, this second factor vanishes, okay? Avoiding the denominator vanishing. Yes, yes. Uh, the, yeah, when, the, when you impose this condition, some, some McDonald's vanishes. But that's not inside the, the finite dimensional representation I will explain. Some, some other. Uh, ah, good question. Uh, when t go to q, you get the, some. I forgot. All little word jack and so on, but I'm not sure. This condition is a bit more sophisticated than such a simple condition. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of time. <sighs> yes. I will explain. I will explain. Um, so the case, let's go look at the one. When q is equal to root of unity, e is equal to pi i over n, okay? To n is the root of unity, and q, uh, t is generic. Um, so then, so you can easily look at the pl uh, acts on l to n, acts on p to n is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, so here, when cap, so the when q is the root of unity, l, this lowering operator that kill this uh, ring, uh, sorry, polynomial, then so you can define a finite dimensional representation as the, the quotient space. Um, 
multiplied by idea generated by Pn. And the Pn, this Pn is actually x to the n plus x to the minus n. Okay. So this is the when q equal to root of unity. You know, moreover, so this is one finite dimensional representation I call un. Um, moreover, uh, so when this condition is satisfied, so this is one finite dimensional representation, and there is a second finite dimensional representation, uh, because when you look at the, uh, still keep this one, this difference operator acts on x, you get the shift q, okay? However, so when you act x to the n to n, plus x to the minus 2n plus delta, where delta is equal to some number, c, this shift operator will, will give you q to the 2n, which is equal to 1, okay? And it's the same thing, q to the minus 2n, which is equal to 1 under this condition. So therefore, this part is invariant. Invariant. Can you see that? Okay. So therefore, so this, the ideal generated by, I call f to n, and which parameterizes some par parameter delta, is defined by CQT, x plus x inverse, generated by this ideal, x to n plus x minus 2n plus delta. Because this ideal is invariant under the action of the Sprague Daha. Okay. So th since the W doesn't do anything, sorry, w, uh, so that not W, pi doesn't do anything to this ideal. So therefore, it's invariant under Sprague action of Sprague Daha. And you can take a quotient, you get a finite dimension right here. And the feature is 2n. Okay, so this is the second case. Delta can be arbitrary value. This delta is, doesn't do anything to the sh by shift operator. Let's look at the second case. So second case is the t square is equal to q to the minus 2k minus 1, and q is generic. Then polynomial L2k plus 1 uh, acts on p, sorry, L2k, sorry, 2k acts on McDonald polynomial 2k, which will give you 0. Okay. So therefore, there is a... Um, Final dimensional representation, which is a quotient by the same piece, by the idea generated by P to K. Okay. So this is sub subscript always means the, 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 the dimension of the module. Okay. Okay. So then it turns out that this is not irreducible module. So this DK to K is um, split to two part. I call it dk plus, dk minus, which is related by x goes to minus x. Okay. x goes to minus x. So, a, so the, for instance, when k go to 1, k go to 1, so this, what, what's happening is p0, p1, and p2, and the l annihilates p2, so therefore it becomes two-dimensional. d2k is two-dimensional, and d, 1 plus is generated by qt, 1 plus x, and d, 1 minus, is generated by 1 minus x, plus minus are different. So they are by the sign flip by x, okay? So it's just standard, uh, like a z2 action, uh, trivial one and the sign representation. Okay, let's move on to third. <laughs> Let's move on to third condition. Third condition is the same. Um, T square um, is equal to minus Q to the N. N is, and uh, Q is generic. Yes.
these are the uh, the one-dimensional representation generated by one plus x. But that goes to x goes to x inverse. Right. And the small x is equal to x plus x inverse. So it's automatically z to invariant. OK. OK. But anyway. Um, so the so polynomial representation L n plus 1 uh, acts on p n 1 equals 0. So it's a standard. So I call it b, Kali b plus n. Um, CQT, x plus x inverse, um, Pn plus 1. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. So at the end of the talk, I hope I can make it, uh, this finite dimensional representation appears the geometry here. So you have to remember, I mean, you, if you take, keep an, a note, that's fine. But you have to remember F, sorry, U, F, D, and... Uh, B here. So they, they are finite dimensional representation arising from the uh, polynomial representation. In strictly speaking, F is not, uh, does not arise from polynomial representation. OK, and the substrate is always at the, um, the d dimension of representation. There is a hybrid case you one can consider. When the two conditions satisfy, when three of three, uh, two conditions out of three are satisfied, so there's something interesting happened. So for instance, when this one and two conditions satisfied, are satisfied. Sorry, not two, sorry. Let's first start with three, uh, satisfied for some reason. Um, there's a short exact sequence, F, to n, so the f is over there, and you have to put delta is equal to minus 2, um, b n plus 1, 0, and there's another uh, 2 n plus n minus 1, another um, Finite dimension representation appear, okay. whose dimension is 2n minus n minus 1. When it's, it's very subtle, so I like to, so this is the classification of finite dimension representation, that's why it's so involved. Um, when, so when n minus n minus 1 is odd. And also when Capital n minus small n minus one is even. Another short exact sequence appears. B n plus one goes to zero, um, and u u n and uh, d k plus d k minus appear. So. So this 1 plus 3 guarantees the existence of f and u and v. However, uh, so when two conditions satisfied, it turns out that the 1 plus 3 implies 2, actually, with up to some, some involution, but which I'm going to suppress. So therefore, um, so there are two short exact sequence appears when 1 and 3 are satisfied. And a similar phenomenon occurs one, when you impose one and two condition satisfied uh, are satisfied. You guarantee the existence u and d. It turns out that when one and two conditions satisfy, there is a short exact sequence. Same short exact sequence appears in here. Okay. That's what's going to happen. And then later, so this short exact sequence uh, can be understood as a bound state of brains. So you have to remember. So the, the finite dimension representation uh, are classified as the, the existence U, F, B, D, and N. Those are all finite dimension representation that appear in the Daha of F1. Okay. okay. 
it. Um, that's according to Cherenik, <laughs> sorry. Um, this N, this N can be understood coming from another representation, apart from polynomial representation. So there is a way to construct the N out of some other representation, but um, I'm going to suppress, which is complicated. So this N is a bit special one. Yeah. 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 Those are all, yeah. I, I, you, uh, you know the story. Those are only co compact Lagrangians in Hitch modular space. Okay, so that's the first part, and I spent too much time on this first part. Um, so let's move on to second. So this is the geometry of MH, Hitch, uh, the Hitch modular space. MH, and the reason why, so the this. Uh, School is devoted to non-abelian Hodge correspondence. I don't need to spend so much of, so much time about the non-abelian Hodge correspondence. So modular space of flat connection of T2 mod point of SL to C uh, is equal. I mean, if you have morphic or more of a hypercalor rotation to the modular space Higgs bundle uh, T2 mod point of SU2. Um, so this is non appian Hodge correspondence, and so I just so this part I just going to explain. So it's a pair of the holomorphic rank two vector bundle with Higgs field phi, which is a section of T two and morphism of E, and times canonical bundle, and you just impose some ramification at the point P. Okay, point point P. So T two more point P ramification. Some Paul. All right, so it's a divisor, which means. Um, and the far, this part is just flat connections. And uh, I have to specify the, how the pole look like. But uh, I just want to explain that there is a hyperkeller manifold. There is a three complex structure. And I take I as a complex structure coming from Riemann surface, T to more point, okay? And J coming from character variety, or SL2C, character variety. I mean, character variety, which is or SL2C. So, which means the, when I write the modular space of flatness on cubic surface, X first, Y. So that's what I have written, 2 plus trace of U, U. X, Y, Z are holomorphic with respect to complex J. And I coming from, uh, so those are the, the holomorphic in Higgs in I, and the K is I times J. Okay, and so you have to specify the ramification, and uh, that's the answer to Sergey. I'm going to answer to Sergey and the tutor. And the ramification, you have to, in the Higgs field, uh, A is alpha, I call it P, D Sater. Um, D Sater, so there, there is a point here, point P here, and I take the, the, the Nibo foot around the ramification point P here, and I take Z is the holomorphic coordinate around the open Nibo foot around the P, and Z is R to the E to the I sailor. So this is my, my notation. And the Higgs field takes the one half uh, beta P plus I gamma P plus DZ mod Z, where the alpha P and the triple of this ramification data takes the value of Kautam inside a uh, carton of SL2, okay? And so the, the mass of, the, mass of the, this n equal 2 star theory is given beta plus, uh, complex mass is given by beta plus I gamma. However, U is actually T square, T minus 2, is actually, is equal to exponential of 2 pi I, 2 pi plus alpha plus I gamma. So it's a holomorphic in complex J. Okay? You have to take the holomorphic in complex J instead of the holomorphic in complex I. These combinations are holomorphic in complex I, but these are holomorphic in complex J. That's the answer. And it, this is the mass parameter of the R joint. Um, yeah. 
Yes. So the X and the Y and Z are with on to hoof loop uh, in the, for the NQTSA theory. That's a holomorphic in complex at J. It's, it takes a holomorphic values. It's, it's trace of, it's trace of a um, trace of exponential a complexified. Then this is holomorphic in complex at J. Okay. That's what, what I meant. So this define. So this defines the hypersurface. This defines the hypersurface inside a C3. Okay? It's a complex two-dimensional surface or real four-dimension. That is described the module space for flat connections or Coulomb branch for the NQ2 stack Coulomb branch. This is M Coulomb. So I will explain more in detail. So Um, and so I'm interested in the homomorphic, as I mentioned, so the, I'm interested in the homomorphic coordinate ring uh, in respect to J and the homomorphic hyper, so simplex form is given by 2z minus xy, which is given by the omega k plus i omega, sorry, i times omega i, okay? So this is the holomorphic simplex form with respect to j, and which is the, this, this is the Taylor form with respect to i, j, k, okay? Okay. And I'm going to explain more, more physics, I mean, I mean, I, I will explain more in detail about geometry of uh, Sujay's question in later, in five minutes. So without ramification, without ramification, which means without puncture, it's the modular space of flat connections on torus is well known, uh, SL2C, is well known by C star cross C star. Even this is, you have to know if you want to understand the um, volume conjecture, general volume conjecture. So C with, without ramification, it's just uh, spanned by the holonomy with respect to meridian, let's call mu, is x plus x inverse, uh, some star zero, zero, and the lambda, oh, this is longitude, sorry. I should l say, l I'm sorry. This is longitude is y, y inverse, and the meridian, mu, is given by um, x, x inverse, star, zero, zero, okay? And uh, so this x uh, parameterized on the coordinate, y parameterized the other uh, c star, and z to act on the residual y group, okay? So without ramification. And if you look at the real locus, which is t2 mod su2, uh, so Real locus is just S1, okay? S1 cross S1 mod Z2, okay? Um, I mean, there is a C star coordinate. As you just remove origin. A real part is just a unit circle, okay? And Z2 acts on the standard way. Um, and I call it, yes, okay. Uh, I call it, this is bound G, thanks to Great mass machine in uh, machine So it's, I just call it Banji. So I'm not going to explain why. Um, and the people know. <laughs> and what's nice about non even Hodge correspondence is one can use the Hitchin vibration. Um, yes. Ramification. Uh, because you, you just assume genus equal to greater than one. But here, you great, genus is equal to one, so it's a bit, bit more special than, than usual Hitchin module space dimension. Yeah, I will explain. I will explain. <laughs> um, so the one can use the Hitchin vibration, I call it pi instead of h. So MH goes to the um, alpha space. I would like to use A. 
which is parameterized by H0, T2, and uh, Kc is the point P to the 2. Okay. Uh, and in physicist language, this is called U plane. Uh, I mean, physicist language, this is called U plane. Okay. Um, so alpha in space, MH, and map to here. So this is, this is parameterized essentially traced Fasker. Fasker. Um, so this is a hitch map. Um, as many people explain, at the generic point, the pre-major generic point is the complex tori. Complex, in this case, I call it F, is uh, homeomorphic to just tori, two tori. However, if you look at the point, uh, the pre-major zero, pre-major zero, so this is the elliptic vibration, where there's some uh, the occurs at the point zero, okay? So this is point zero, let's call pi zero, pi inverse zero. Usually people call N, that's what, uh, and uh, as Tony explained, it's called global nipotent cone. Um, for without ramification, global nipotent cone is t, uh, just bungee, okay? Without ramification, so it's a bungee is the S1 cross S1 is T2, mod Z2 is the fundamental region, is the, just this part. And there's a four singular point, and uh, it's called pillow case, okay? Without lamification. So without lamification means T equal, T equal to one, okay? T square equal to one. Uh, it's a pillow case, it, this is band G, okay? So Nipotent coin is just band G. However, when you turn on the ramification, then uh, everything becomes smooth, as the uh, Ashwin told us. Um, I, I mean, so my, my notation is u is equal to t square, t minus square. This is the notation. That's why. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> No ramification through the singular point. Singular point in Banji. No, no ramification. Banji is just T2 mod C2, so there's a four singular point. However, if you do the, uh, turn on the ramification, everything becomes smooth. Smooth. And there is a P1 appears. Okay. That's a nipotent cone. So nipotent cone is the, in the generic uh, ramification, is the bound G with, I call D1, D2, D3, D4, which is called exceptional divisor, uh, DI, sum of DI, sum of one to four DI, okay? Um, I think I have to spend five more minutes than uh, as a schedule. So that's the usual ramification at the new point and con. And so it's elliptic vibration. So it looks like an affine D4 singularity. So affine D4 Dinkin diagram is look like this way. That's why it's called affine D4. D4 singularity, okay? Affine D4 singularity, and it's elliptic vibration. So therefore, this singular fiber is classified by Kodaira. And it's in Kodaira classification, it's called I0 star. And these are the, the, the exceptional, these exceptional divisor are the, the, the difference between T star and G and the MH. And that's, they are related by birational, birational equivalence. Okay. So these are the cost, uh, the, 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 they are related by blow up and blow down. So that's mean, that's the meaning of birational equivalence. Okay. Um, uh, where words I can where I can okay. okay and so I have to mention one more thing so the if you're a physicist um, this U plane is a current branch on R4 and if you put the theory on S1 cross S1 cross R4 okay uh, sorry R3 and it, with radius R so this 
one of the uh, direction is related to uh, one of our, sorry, one of our, yeah. So, so the, the size of this torus is one of our. So when you turn on, if R is infinity, just this, this vibration, you cannot be invisible. And the Coulomb branch is the, uh, the U plane. However, when you put on the circle, you get the, some, these are the abelian Wilson to Fuss line. Okay. And when you go to R, you go to zero, it becomes 3D and equal to four Coulomb branch, and the, the fiber becomes C star. That's, you should ask Tudor. And one more thing I have to mention that it's, a, it's called completely integrable system. So therefore, generic fiber F, generic fiber F is uh, called BAA brain. So it's holomorphic in complex I, but it's Lagrangian the other complex. Okay. Um, so but however, so the, the here you have to be careful about the new potent cone. So the since this exception device appears when the ramification uh, is turned on. And it turns out that the alpha p is given by this exception device i, omega i, and the beta p is given by one half. One half, oh, sorry, four pi. Four pi, uh, d i, omega j, and uh, let's see, gamma p is one over four pi, d i omega k. Okay. And alpha, so alpha p in previous is Carlton, which is the, let's call, uh, these are some bold like vector, like a bold alpha, beta, gamma. These are uh, the Carlton. And the, this Carlton is alpha p minus alpha p, zero, zero, and uh, so on. Beta p is beta p minus beta p, zero, zero, and so on, gamma is so on. So therefore, once you turn on the ramification, this exception divisor sees a, sees a Kela form. So they are no longer Lagrangian, okay? You have to be careful. I mean, no longer, with, no longer BA brain, okay? Once you turn on only alpha, the exception divisor are BA brain. However, once you turn on beta and gamma, they are no longer BA brain. But it's Lagrangian, but no longer BA brain. The same as band G. Band G knows about how the, this D, exception divisor, changes. So therefore, once you turn on the ramification, band G is no longer BA. Without ramification, band G is BA. However, with ramification, no longer BA. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't assume, to be honest. I, I didn't go into that, the, the detail. <laughs> Sorry. Let me assume semi simple. Okay, so <laughs> I don't have so much time left. Uh, Let's move on to brain quantization. So brain quantization. I think I, I'm going over time five or 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Let me go over the time. So brain quantization. Uh, so, with, so we look at the representation of Daha and the geometry of homogeneous space. And I like to connect between uh, representation and geometry. So the one way, so the, the brain quantization is a physics approach to the geometric representation theory uh, introduced by Kukov Witten. Kukov Witten. Um, and then, so you started with for the n two star theory, um, T two times uh, sigma. Sigma is some Riemann surface can have a boundary, and the compact form on T two. Then you get the 2D sigma model. Uh, sigma is mapped to the homogeneous space, MH of T2 mod point of SU2. Okay. 
And uh, since sigma can have a bound, sorry, sigma can have a boundary, you have to specify the boundary condition on this sigma. And I'm interested in the A model. With respect to A model means the, the boundary condition given by A brain. And with respect to omega x, which is 1 over h bar, uh, 1 over h bar, sorry, imaginary part of minus over h bar omega j. So I scale holomorphic simplex form j by 1 over h bar, okay, and the h bar is given by 2 pi i h bar. Q is related by h bar, by like this way. Since Q is a C-star variable, H can take any complex value. Okay? And so if you do the honest computation, it's easy to see that this is 1 over h bar um, omega i um, sine set plus omega k Cosine theta. Okay. Cosine theta. Way h bar is h bar is e to the i theta. That's the minority. Um, um, and the usual air brain. Usual air brain. Um, is given by uh, the flat unitary bundle over Lagrangian uh, with respect to this omega x. Uh, I, I call this entire modular spaces uh, flat x. Okay, that's why omega, I call it omega x. So, uh, so the flat unitary bundle is Lagrangian Lagrangian L with respect to L. Okay. So some bundle over L, so that's I call BL, brain, A brain, supported by Lagrangian L, and the S is a flat unit bundle, and the C1 of S, the curvature F, is satisfied by F, the general, generalized flatness condition. F plus B is equal to zero. So B is a B field of the sigma model. Okay. So this is the, I mean, flat unit bundle means the flat including the effect of B field. Okay. That's the physicist's way to define the flatness condition. Um, however, a Kapustin also show that the Kapustin or show that the um, Show that the um, some membrane are supported on co-isotropic some manifold. Some manifold. So th this is some manifold is def locally defined. Um, Defined by Poisson commuting functions. So the Poisson structure coming home with omega x. And the maximum number of Poisson commuting functions is a half of dimension target space. In that case, co isolate sum for is a Lagrangian. Is a Lagrangian. But it can be higher dimensional. And there is one distinguished object called. Um, uh, distinguished object or canonical called isotropic uh, brain, which I call BCC. So BCC is the line bundle uh, over the entire modulus target X, Hitch module, entire Hitch module space itself. And whose curvature satisfies the following condition? Whose curvature, you see, f plus b 
times omega, uh, sorry, the omega x times is times j equal to. Okay. This, this is a condition. This is a BCC. So this is, j is a complex structure. The omega x is a symplectic form. Fb is the curvature plus B field. So this is a condition. <laughs> so to satisfy this condition, so I need to look at the, the F plus B can be understood as the real part of uh, 1 minus I ohm, uh, which is the 1 over H bar um, omega I sine theta minus omega K, sorry, this is a cosine theta. Cosine theta, omega k sine theta. Um, and uh, so omega x, as I have written, imaginary part of minus i of h bar omega j, and the which is written there. Then uh, it's easy to see that the, the that condition, co isolated condition, is satisfied. And to connect the representation theory, you have to use this. Um, canonical cosmetic brain in the sigma model. So the, the boundary condition A model is um, given by, um, so the BC, so what the Kapusin also showed that this BCC, BCC string, uh, algebra, algebra of BCC, BCC string. So if you have the BCC, BCC boundary condition, so it, if you connect them together, you get another BCC, BCC. So it forms the algebra. Um, BCC, BCC string will give you the um, holomorphic func ring of the so algebra of holomorphic function over uh, omega x, uh, sorry, sorry, over x, and holomorphic with respect to j, j, because of that, that coercitive condition. And um, moreover, um, one can use, um, by the way, so the, that's bit detour, but when, once you turn off f and b, this, this BCC, BCC string will give you sheaf of French operator, what the uh, Tony tells us. But once you turn on F, you get the homomorphic functions. Okay. So therefore, home in sky category BCC, BCC is string between two boundary conditions. Okay, string between boundary conditions will give you homomorphic function of the target space, which is spherical daha, as we saw. And so once you change the other boundary condition, BL, BL is the ordinary A brain. So then you get another BCC, BL string. Okay. So therefore, homo BCC, BCC acts on homo BCC, BL. Okay. So therefore, you get the module. So therefore, given the Lagrangian, okay, you have a corresponding module. And you can also replace BL by any A brain. Okay? So therefore, so the first condition appears, uh, condition or relation appears. A, A brain category is some relation, or in a more precise way, there's a functor from A brain to the representation category. Once you take home BCC slash. Okay? So that's the uh, reason why the, one can see the relation between the um, Give me five more minutes, sorry. I'm sorry? Could you do it? So map of objects, sorry. At, at this point, a map of objects, and I'm, uh, if you properly define this category, and if you properly define a derived category, it's hopefully this is the equivalence. Equivalent, hopefully, but I don't know. Um, okay, um, I don't think I have so much time. I'm running over time. So I'll just give you the, the answer. 
only one, one answer. Okay, so you have a f, f is two torus, and uh, the pre-image in newpotent cone is uh, pre-image of zero is newpotent cone. And this is generic point, and uh, so you have a newpotent cone is the uh, the affine default singularity, and this is bound G, D1, D2, D3, and D4. And as I mentioned, so the Hijin, generic Hijin fiber is BAA brain. Um, BAA brain. So therefore, um, So if you look at the brain supported, so it's a Lagrangian with respect to omega k. Okay. So if you look at the brain supported on supported on uh, the generic fiber f. So you have to tune. Oh, I hope I already erased. I think so. I might I should write down again. So if you compare this symplectic form with BAA condition, you have to always tune theta is equal to zero. Because I mean, if you take theta is non-zero, it takes the value of omega i. Okay, some part of coming from omega. Symplectic structure contains omega i, but with respect to omega i, it's holomorphic. Okay, so therefore, in order for generic fiber f is the Lagrangian, so omega x has to be omega k. Okay, so you have to tune theta equal to zero, which is the Q H is real number. Okay, real number. Furthermore, um, um, so this. If you consider flux f over the the e generic fiber f over two pi, f is the curvature of this uh, BCC, you get the one over h bar. Okay. If you plug this one f plus b into sorry f plus b, so I can take b equals zero for simplicity. So this is one over h bar. Okay. So therefore, this is the sum has to be integer number. So therefore, this will give you q is equal to e to the two pi i as a pi i over some integer. Okay. Uh, where I assume the h bar is uh, two n. Two okay. n. I assume the h bar is an even number because of good reason. So the I should f is two bound g. If there is a fiber cross relation, f bound g plus sum of the uh, there is an even number of the divisor, so you can take the flux over the even number of the divisor. You should get the inter even integer. So therefore, so that. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> so therefore, this will give rise to the f two n plus delta, two n plus delta, and you have to keep, be careful what delta means. The, yes. Okay. 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 So this delta is equivalent to holonomy. So this is t two. So you can have a flat bundle can have a holonomy supporting brain. So this delta. Summarize complex number of meridian longitude. Yes. It's a sum, yeah. So this is this is F to N a delta. And I should mention everything. So this is related to P N plus one and this is D K plus and D K minus zero Y D uh, D K. 
um, plus zero y dk minus. Y is a reflection. Z y is a reflection. Y goes to minus y. Okay. Um, and also, I just give you all the answers. So this bound state, if you look at short exact sequence, this will give you n. U n. And this new potent cone will give us n plus minus n minus 1 or something. Yeah. So that's the corresponds between finite dimensional representation and the compact plane. Uh, sorry about running over time. So that's the correspondence between finite dimensional representation and the compact A brain in the Hitch modules. Thank you very much. Maybe time for one or two quick questions. So, so um in the Higgin modular space, you get quantization conditions by, uh, from, the, from the churn classes. Yes. Is, I, do those match one-to-one, -one the, the sort of quant, uh, shortening conditions you found? Yes, yes, yes. So. Yes. They exactly matches. So um, in order for this expression divisor, you have to put the, the corresponding shortening condition. In order for this bungee is Lagrangian with respect to omega x, you have to put this, this corresponding shortening condition. Uh, exactly what, when this brain becomes Lagrangian. Yeah. This is exactly what happened. Uh, okay. A very naive question. Q is yes. exponential of H bar. H bar? Um, I just scale the homomorphic simplex form by a complex number. Um, yes, I understand that. But little q was exponential of h bar. To little, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. So yes. That suggests that there is uh, periodicity in h bar. I'm sorry? That suggests that there is periodicity. Yes, yes. Bar. Yes. So the r goes to h bar plus one. None mm -hmm. of these formulas. So the. There's the B field, which would shift it, but H bar... Yeah, I mean, Q is equal to e to the 2 pi i H bar, but this can be any complex num uh, C star variable. Yes. Okay? And the real part is just... Um, so Q does not change as you change H bar by H bar to H bar plus 1. Q does not change. Yes, 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 yes. Look at your formulas, which um, appear involving the... Symplectic forms. Yes. They clearly all change. Uh, is there some hidden invariance or some other relation that we don't know? Yes, enjoy? yes, yes. But in that case, uh, I just look at the, the, the volume of the, this Lagrangian in the unit of H bar. So, the, so the, only the volume changes, the dimension changes. Okay, maybe we can discuss later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I have one quick question. So the relationship between Hitchin moduli space and Taha, does it extend to higher genus? Um, so the, the, the algebra is no, no longer called generic algebra. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, I mean, here, if you ask the generic, it's, uh, he will call generalized generic algebra, maybe, Taha. Or if you ask uh, Hiraku Nakajima, it's called quantized Kuron branch. But the algebra is more, much more complicated. If you well, okay. The reason I asked is, in this example, you didn't run into wobbly devices, the thing that... Yes, Tony yes, 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 about. yes, yes. But anything in higher genus, you would have to... Yeah, accomplish. be careful about the, which one has the wobbly locus, whatever shaky locus, and so on. And you will see the corresponding finite dimension representation. Yeah. Or of quantized Kuro branch, or algebra line operator on class S. Okay. I'm very sorry of overrunning over time, sir. Okay, we'll thank Satoshi again and.